Hey, Abundant Parents, it's Leah. We are talking all about the law of attraction, how it impacts you and how that then impacts your children. Now, if you don't know about the law of attraction or you know very little about it, it's, it's this idea that you attract into your life what you focus on. So the concept being if you focus on positivity and gratitude, then, then more positivity will come into your life. If you focus on negativity, then more negativity will come into your life. So you can see it's really important to be intentional with your thoughts and always aware of where your mind is traveling. Maybe not always, but just having a general awareness and and understanding that, that positivity and neg negativity are both really impacting your life. Now there is definitely a little bit of a piece of spiritual hippy dippiness with the law of attraction. And that being that you can't witness the energy that is involved with the law of attraction. You can't actually witness that at work. It's not a physical energy that you're seeing uh, immediately. And so there takes a lot of elements of, of that blind faith, that's that, that belief that it's at work even though you can't see it. There's another piece of it that's a little bit more hippy-dippy in that this concept that you can change your mind and that will in turn change your life. So if if that's enough for you, then this next couple minutes will just be the science to convince you further. If you still need a little bit more convincing, let's talk about the scientific side of the law of attraction and energy. So you'll notice in a lot of medical journals now, doctors who are treating patients for cancer and other disease, they're actually finding that when there's an adjunct of, of therapy or exercises involving positive thinking and gratitude, that patients are actually positively being impacted in their treatment for their disease, that they're seeing a greater uh, improvement in, in their bodies and their health when being treated for disease, when they are being treated to, to be positive thinkers and to receive positive therapy. Uh, similarly, therapists are also noting in medical journals that they're noticing that their patients are improving faster during their sessions when they're practicing positivity on the regular. So that's just their point of view and what they're, um, what they're witnessing, but there's also the, the, the physical science of energy, you see it in physics, you see it in the way that a ball can, can bounce and travel through a room. You can see it with the way a rubber band expands and contracts and can also shoot across the room. That is the physical energy that, that we can witness. And that's so much easier to wrap our heads around our physical world and, and what, we, what we witness physically. There's also this really cool uh, newer concept called mirror neurons. And because of technology and, and science and, and where we've come to in, in our day and age, we're actually able to, to see these mirror neutrons through, through amazing technology. So mirror neurons, I may have said neutrons, but it's neurons. Mirror neurons is this concept that we witness particular behaviors or energy, and then our brains mirror that. So an example would be um, watching an athlete perform a sport. So as a spectator, either in the stands or sitting on your sofa, you are experiencing the same output of neurons as the athlete themselves. So the athlete will be experiencing exhilaration, maybe a little anxiety, pregame jitters. They will be experiencing the, the thrills of the game, the adrenaline, the rush. And when, when they're also marking, when they're, you know, when they're also taking scans of, of people who are just watching the game, their brains are also exhibiting the same neuron activity. So it's basically this concept of monkey see, monkey do, but with neurons energetically, which is pretty cool. So that's just a little bit of the science about it. So, so let's talk about how mirror neurons impact you personally and then how that kind of follows down the trail to affecting your children. Perfect example of this is looking in the mirror. So you are able to mirror your neurons to yourself. It's this idea that when you're looking in the mirror, you are oftentimes and unfortunately 
judging yourself and thinking negative things. We all do it. If, if you don't do it, I'm so proud of you. I'm interested to hear if you've done a lot of work to get to that point because I know I have. Um, but the majority of people, when, when they look in the mirror, they speak negatively about themselves, either out loud, subconsciously sometimes, definitely that internal dialogue of negativity about yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. So interestingly, you can change that dialogue through mirroring positive words and phrases and affirmations to yourself. You're essentially mirroring your neurons back to yourself for positivity. For example, you may look in the mirror and say, I don't like my wrinkles, I'm getting sunspots, I'm getting creases in between my eyes in my furrowed brow, I'm getting loose skin on my neck, I'm getting fatty paunches that come over the top of my jeans. There can be this constant negative conversation within your own mind that you're telling yourself. Now, similarly, we were talking about the power of attraction working both positively and negatively. You will find that if you look in the mirror and you start giving yourself positive affirmations that over time, and not in broad sweeping strokes, but in little bits and pieces, you will start to find a general, more positive outlook about yourself. That means, whether you believe it or not, looking in the mirror and telling yourself that you like yourself, that you like your body, that you like who you are as a person, that you like how you look, it, for me, was not believable in the least, least bit at first. When I first started doing it, I felt a little bit ridiculous. I did not believe it at all. But after a few weeks, I became more comfortable with saying the positive statements to myself. In a few months, I actually started to believe it. So I've now reached a point where I don't have to constantly give myself positive affirmations because they come organically, they come naturally. Now I can look in the mirror and I can say, I like myself. I like who I am as a person and how I've grown through adversity. I like how I look. I love my body. I've carried children in my womb and on my hip and my body is strong and healthy. And through a lot of work, I have changed the conversation and that is through the mirroring of neurons to myself, through convincing myself that I do like myself. And you know what? Because I practiced enough, now I actually do like myself. So how does that impact your kids? Because your children are always watching you, always. They may not always be listening, and usually if your kids are anything like mine, they're listening actually when you don't want them to, but they are always watching you. And the younger they are, the more they are always modeling your behaviors. And regardless of their age, they are always mirroring your neurons. So that means if you're looking in the mirror and thinking really negative thoughts about yourself, whether you're saying it out loud or not, they are picking up on that. Your children think you are the most beautiful, perfect, wonderful person on the planet. And so they're thinking, if this amazing person can't love themselves, then, then what hope is there in the world for me to love myself? So I encourage you to start practicing self-love and self-affirmations in the mirror. If you have a hard time doing it just for yourself, then definitely, definitely do it for your kids and you will definitely reap the benefits, the benefits in the process. So a little bit about how the law of attraction affects you personally in this, this scientific thought of the mirroring neurons. Now, another way that the, the neurons and your energy play a role in your children's lives is is the energy that you bring into the home. I, I know I don't have to tell you as parents that, that you are the cornerstone. You are the foundation of your family's experience. You are the sun and the moon, if you will, of your family's home. And you are impacting everybody in that house just based off of how you are feeling. So this means if you've had a really rough day at work and maybe you, you had some altercations with your boss or maybe you had some arguments with your extended family and you haven't cleansed that and if you haven't sorted that before you come home, then all of those neurons of activity and of negativity are still gonna be bouncing around in your brain when you come home to your kids or when you pick your kids up from school. Now, kids all have their struggles. So 
I'm not saying that you are always responsible for your children being out of sorts, but if you have found that you are irritated and agitated and down, you may find your children are acting a little bit more out of sorts than, than normal. So I invite you that the first thing when your child seems to be having meltdown after meltdown, they're really struggling throughout the day, they're tired, I suggest that you check in with yourself. Ask yourself, am I adding to their chaos or am I being a peaceful, calm presence in their time of need? I think you will find, not all the time, but oftentimes, that if they are worked up and then you become worked up, then the situation continues to escalate. But if if they are worked up and you shift your mindset to calm, peaceful, grounded, that they too will be quicker to, to find that peaceful, calm, grounded place with you. It's so important as a parent that you are also considering how your energy is impacting your kids. Another way that I bring this, this grounded positivity into my children's life is through the practice of gratitude. Now, I'm sure you don't have to do a lot of searches on the internet to realize that the law of attraction is all about being grateful for what is already in your life, regardless of how small it is, regardless of how large your struggles are. Finding that gratitude in your daily life is where it all begins. And Teaching your children to find gratitude from a very young age is setting themselves up for an adulthood of positivity, positive expectation, and, and purpose. So something that we do is at dinner time, I will either find cute little printables on Pinterest or just use blank scraps of paper that are kind of about the size of a matchbook, maybe a little bit bigger or smaller, and we write down one thing that we were grateful for in the day. So it can be something very small, it can be something very big, but we write down what we are grateful for. And then at the end of dinner, we tape our little gratitude messages up on their bedroom door. So they actually have an entire bedroom door that's just covered with little pieces of paper of things that they've been able to find gratitude in. Uh, the cool thing about having it someplace where they can see it is they see how these moments of gratitude add up. So something also really interesting was I realized that my children were also finding gratitude in the small things. For example, my younger daughter one time said that she was grateful for the little notes that I put in her lunchbox each day. They're not extravagant notes, they're not fancy. I just take old scrapbooking paper and write a little note on the back of it. Sometimes I'll say, have a good day. Sometimes I'll just tell her that I love her. If she was having a struggle at school, uh, maybe I'll give her an affirmation uh, to, to kind of spin the negativity into a, a positive affirmation for the day. But they're really not what I would call consequential part of her day. But she said that she was grateful for this little note in her lunchbox. And it was so great because I realized they were able to find gratitude in even the smallest things. And I know that through finding gratitude in the small things that those add up to having more small elements of gratitude come into your life and having those small elements become larger and larger elements of gratitude. So that's finding gratitude in things that have already happened. But another even bigger piece of the law of attraction for parents and for kids is expecting to be grateful, expecting to have more things to find gratitude in. And so how that comes into play for us is at night, we set our intentions of, of what we plan to find gratitude in for the next day. Now, I was very involved in the Waldorf community with my kids were younger, and it's just a very beautiful, peaceful experience, the Waldorf education. And I've brought bits and pieces of that along with us as my children have grown. And one piece of that is beeswax candles. They give off such a lovely, light, warm glow. They have a really, like a hint of a honey scent to them as you burn them. And it's become a really big part of our life. We'll sometimes have burn them at dinner time when we're saying our blessings, but setting this intention at night, the candle has come in, into play in a big way. So my oldest daughter lights the candle, my youngest daughter blows it out. We do not leave it lit overnight, but we light the candle and we hold hands. Sometimes we'll say a prayer or a blessing or a group intention, other times, we, we don't say anything, we just set our intention for the next day. So, for example, as my, my daughter, my oldest daughter has grown older, she's having more and more emotional struggles with her friends. 
struggles. The, the, the social struggles, struggles are less about sharing toys and more about their social dynamics together. And so if she's come home and said that she's really struggled with her friends that day, that she's feeling sad and frustrated or angry, then we will talk about that at bedtime and we will flip that complaint, we will flip that concern into an affirmation. So she may say, I'm really worried that tomorrow's gonna be the same. And so we'll, we'll have the candle there and we will flip it to an affirmation. So the affirmation might be, tomorrow I'm going to have a great day with my friends and we're going to laugh a lot. It could be as simple as that. It doesn't need to be complicated. And so she will set that intention, she will say that phrase. And sometimes even the next morning we will say the phrase so it's more real time. So she'll say, today I'm having a great day with my friends and we laugh a lot. And, and so saying it, in, in real time as if it's already happening. And, and then blowing the candle out and that being the last thing that we've done at the end of the day, they're resting on that thought for the whole night and waking, already having that intention in mind of, of their great expectations for the day. So I hope this talk about the law of attraction for parents and for kids has been helpful for you. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell if you'd like to get more videos just like this one. If you are interested in hearing more, I host workshops each month on the Abundant Parent Community Workshops. We bring in experts in their field in holistic parenting, uh, holistic treatments, crystals, everything that, that parents who are into peaceful holistic parenting are interested in. Those are the experts that we host in our workshops. They are also available to ask your questions in the group, which is a great element of the workshops. You can find the workshops at theabundantparent.com and you can sign up there. And so looking forward to opening up the conversation here in the, in the comments about the law of attraction. Tell me what you'd like to hear more about. I'm always looking to serve you as a parent in your journey. Thank you so much. Please share this video and we will catch you soon. Bye, thank you.